name is Michael Dewan Herrick. I'm a psychotherapist and a life coach with over 40 years of experience and I'm currently in private practice in London. Welcome to this 25th episode in my series titled Questioning Woke Psychotherapy. Getting one's head around the whole woke phenomenon can be very confusing and that's what I want to talk about in this video. I've been grappling with it for years and I'm still confused. If you are too, stick around and let's examine our confusion together. I want to start with a Buddhist chant that I learned many years ago. It's one that has stayed with me and I think sets a tone for what I want to say about confusion. It's meant for Buddhist practitioners, but if you simply replace the word Dharma with the word truth, what Dharma actually means, then it can make sense without invoking any religiosity. It's a chant asking for the blessings of the lineage of Tibetan Buddhist teachers of the past, but could just be a declaration of one's own intentions. Here it goes. Grant your blessings so that my mind may be one with the Dharma. Grant your blessings so that Dharma may progress along the path. Grant your blessings so that the path may clarify confusion. Grant your blessings so that confusion may dawn as wisdom. Chants like this are meant to be deeply contemplated over time. The full meaning of this chant is not immediately obvious. But I'll offer a very basic commentary just to get the ball rolling. I invite you to reflect on it yourself and see what it might mean for you. So taking it one line at a time, grant your blessings so that my mind may be one with the Dharma. Most simply, we could take this as declaring the intention to seek and dwell in the truth with both a small and a capital T. Next, grant your blessings so that Dharma may progress along the path. This seems to suggest that the truth proceeds along a path that may entail greater depth, breadth, and stages of truth as one goes along and develops. Grant your blessings so that the path may clarify confusion. This could be a statement of intention as well, that with effort, one's confusion might be resolved into clarity. It's the wish to no longer be confused. Grant your blessings so that confusion may dawn as wisdom. Ah, those crazy, beautiful Tibetans. This line may require more contemplation than the others to begin to understand it. It suggests to me that while confusion may be problematic and something to clear up on the one hand, it's also a source of wisdom and not something to reject. Okay, so having set this frame on the topic, what about being confused by woke? Why are we so confused? Everything I'm about to say could be taken as my own confession. These are all things that have been confusing to me. As I consider myself an average guy, I will assume that some of it will overlap with some of your own confusions. Maybe now and maybe over time. For me, it started when the lofty ideals of woke, as I understood them, seemed at odds with what it was teaching. For instance, I started off believing that diversity, equity, and inclusion were noble goals. They made sense to me if we wanted to live in a just and compassionate society. When I became aware that the woke version of diversity didn't really include everybody, and particularly not diverse perspectives, I felt confused. When equity didn't mean equal opportunity, but instead it meant forced equal outcomes that required treating people differently, I felt confused. When inclusion meant excluding people and segregating groups in order to establish safe spaces, yet again, I felt confused. For each of these words, I felt like Inigo Montoya in The Princess Bride, who famously said, I do not think that word means what you think it means. It took me a while and plenty of investigation and reflection to clarify to myself that I did not stand with the woke ideology. Along with diversity, equity, and inclusion, there have been other words that, for the woke, don't have the meaning I ascribe to them. For instance, 
anti-racism, white supremacy, phobia, hate, merit, minor attracted person, and mostly peaceful protest, to name a few. Encountering the, the new definitions for these words caused a cognitive dissonance for me, which led to confusion. This was followed by a careful sorting out of truth from falsity. Next up on my list of things that have confused me is more personal. Maybe you've experienced this. When I began to express some of the insights that were coming to me about woke, I was surprised by the reactions I got from some close friends and family. People I thought I had good reason to believe knew my heart based on our long history and their knowledge of how I have lived my life and what I have consistently cared about suddenly turned on me with scathing condemnation. A couple even declared that our decades-long friendship was over. It was shocking. That really broke my naive belief that these things could be discussed openly with anybody as long as one was respectful and reasonable. From the first major shock to the dissolving of my naivety took time and there was plenty of confusion and hurt as well in the interval between. Another thing that has been confusing and very frustrating to me is discovering that not all woke are the same. Formulating a critique of the woke, which increasingly has seemed necessary, runs into predictable rebuttals when woke is treated as one monolithic thing. Basically, the objection is, not all woke are like that, or as we now say, N-A-W-A-L-T. For instance, not all BLM advocates are Marxists. The founders are Marxists, but every BLM chapter has its own view, and not all agree with the founders on that point. Also, some who could be considered woke are more focused on particular social issues and may not subscribe to all the other woke concerns, nor the full range of underlying woke tenets. For instance, TERFs, or trans-exclusionary radical feminists, are at odds with trans rights advocates. Many who campaign for things that are considered woke, like racial justice or body positivity or women's rights, may not know much about or subscribe to critical social justice theory or postmodernism. Some will find the connection through the theory of intersectionality, and some won't. The recognized leaders, writers, and speakers for woke tend to be well-versed in the long history of, of ideas that have come together and evolved into their current ideology, narrative, and agenda, while their followers may only dimly be aware of these things, and certainly many haven't fully thought them through. Many are simply unaware of the intellectual foundations in Marxism, critical theory, and postmodernism underpinning the causes they've been recruited for. They have no idea. There's been a long march through the institutions, as they say. Maybe the moral thrill of the cause and a sense of purpose and belonging are not things some are willing to risk losing by questioning their beliefs. They can't be bothered to consider the long-term consequences of their addiction to that drug laced with toxic substances. Nevertheless, it's not fair or accurate to ascribe ideological beliefs to those who couldn't articulate those beliefs if you asked them to. They've been captured. Another source of confusion for me has been the inherent contradictions within woke ideology. I started once upon a time with the assumption that it would be a coherent and internally consistent rational system of thought. It turned out that I was setting myself for confusion with that assumption. It's not coherent or consistent. And it seems not to care about this either. When an irrational argument is pointed out, the challenger is accused of using the rhetorical tools of the oppressor group, and the need to address the challenge is neutralized. As I saw the woke ideology contradict itself over and over and immunize itself against criticism, I was persuaded to let go of my earlier assumption and not expect it to be consistent. That didn't take it off the hook in my mind. It only meant that I was no longer surprised or confused when I saw it happen. It's now predictable. And here's the mother load of confusion for me. In order to understand the history of ideas behind woke well enough to critique them, it has to be studied. 
I have watched hundreds of hours of YouTube videos and read stacks of books to try to gain that understanding. While this has been tremendously helpful to, toward clarifying my confusion, it has also often left my head spinning. Here are a few of the books that I have found helpful, some of which spun my skull like a dreidel. Cynical Theories by James Lindsay and Helen Pluckrose. The Identity Trap by Yascha Munk. Cynical Therapies, edited by Val Thomas. Back to Reality, a Critique of Postmodern Theory and Psychotherapy by Barbara Held. Woke Racism by John McWhorter. The New Puritans by Andrew Doyle. Social Justice Fallacies and also The Quest for Cosmic Justice, both by Thomas Sowell. The Madness of Crowds by Douglas Murray. Reinventing Racism by Jonathan Church. Against Decolonization by Doug Stoke. Trans by Helen Joyce. The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. And America's Cultural Revolution. How the Radical Left Conquered Everything by Christopher Rufo. I'll leave this list and links to other resources below in the description for anyone who's interested. In addition to listening to and reading the thoughts of those critical of woke, I found it also helpful to listen to and read what the woke have to say for themselves. For instance, people like Robin D'Angelo and Ibram X. Kendi. The woke have been fantastically prolific in espousing their views. As I said earlier, they don't all sing from the exact same hymn book, which makes it impossible to equate them and come up with one accurate characterization. And yeah, that's confusing. But there are common themes and some general contours to their arguments that can be identified. I found that while it's a vast body of academic output and can be intimidating, at the end of the day, to me, it is generally not philosophically robust or substantial. It's big on quantity and low on quality. And psychologically, it's a one-trick pony. It boils psychological and emotional well-being down to being validated and included, which is everybody else's job, while it ignores personal responsibility and resilience and fosters a psychology of victimhood and resentment. Woke perspectives are constricted to the few that serve its social agenda, and there are leaps to grand conclusions that leave many questions unasked and therefore unanswered. So woke, in its hubris, to me, has become a bit of a paper tiger. Coming to some understanding of the history of woke ideas is complicated, confusing. It's hard to fully grasp. Learning about it might take us back to Marx, and we can read about Marxist revolutions. Then we might go on to learn about the Frankfurt School, starting in the 1920s, and the birth of critical theory. Maybe we learn about Horkheimer and Adorno and Marcuse. Then we might move on to Foucault, Derrida, and other postmodernists. Then Derek Bell at Harvard Law School developing critical race theory and Kimberly Crenshaw introducing intersectionality. Then Angela Davis and Eldridge Cleaver's violent revolutionary approach and the various other spin-offs of critical theory like Judith Butler's queer theory. We can learn about Paolo Freire's critical pedagogy on and on. It's a complex, tangled web of ideas. And learning about it, and especially through knowing the biographical stories of these thinkers, one can feel sympathy with their causes and motivations and some truth in their ideas. I know I have. This winds up being confusing. At least it has been for me at times. There's a younger, less informed, and less wise part of me that almost feels inspired to join their cause sometimes. My point is that digging into all of this is hard work and a big brain ache. If it isn't impacting you directly in a significant way, it's easy to ignore. With jobs, families, and other personal interests to pursue, who has time for this? But you've taken time out of your day to listen to me, so it must matter to you to some degree. Perhaps you have some confusion that you hope I might help you to clarify, or else you hope I can affirm some bit of clarity you've already gained along the way. I hope that I can do a little bit of these two things for you.
If I can also introduce something that will spark a new level of fruitful confusion for you, I'll be glad to do that as well. One way to avoid confusion is to simply not engage in learning about any of this, or to give up on it when it becomes too complicated and frustrating. Another way is to put all people who advocate from a woke position into one group and with a sweep of the hand declare them all to be misguided at best or, wor or at worst malignant. We might do this based on our immediate intuitive reactions with very little self-reflection and scant curiosity about what is behind it all. From that perspective, the path may seem clear, rebut and destroy all of the woke arguments and eliminate the woke from the playing field. Except, how are we to rebut arguments we don't fully understand in the first place? And even if this was possible, I'm not sure it would be wise to completely destroy all that comes with the woke. There's something primordial, or maybe archetypal, about the drive behind woke. I sense it's part of our psychic DNA. It's the deep longing for individual freedom, fairness, and belonging. This is not going away, or at least we should hope not. Figuring out how to realize and embody these deep human longings while balancing them with personal responsibility and also contending with the inescapable existential realities of life. That, I believe, is our collective dilemma and challenge. That's the path forward, and the path is fraught with confusion. There are myriad paradoxes to confront, gray zones, trade-offs, irreconcilable differences, inevitable and necessary limits to freedom, and so on. If we're not willing to grapple with confusion, we don't stand a chance. If we demand that the path be free of confusion and accomplish this by eliminating half of every perplexing dialectic from the thinking that drives our actions, I think we're guaranteed to make a mess of things. And if we leave the woke to do this, and just get on with our lives, the mess they will make will eventually impact us directly and significantly. If we don't steer clear of an accident, we are left dealing with the aftermath. What I'm trying to say is that it's not only the woke who avoid or refuse to admit confusion. We can all be like that. They do have a special reputation, however, for claiming to know the truth of all things. If we were to become woke, then we would see everything in those terms and believe that nothing of any importance was left out. I don't believe that the way forward is to offer an alternative, final, all-encompassing truth as a superior replacement for woke. In other words, I suggest we don't stop with the third line of the Buddhist chant where all confusion has been clarified. Instead, we can make a case for the value of confusion, or we could say uncertainty, and create and offer a space for true dialogue, what woke seems unable to offer, or so far participate in. In that space, the dialectics of competing values get hammered out and synthesized, not into some ultimate state finally free of all confusion, but as an endless process of negotiation, transformation, and evolution. I think it would be a mistake to give the reins of power to the woke, although we have just about managed to completely do this already. It would also be a mistake to think that they will tone down, so to speak, on their own if we just give them enough time. No. They will charge full steam ahead unless they encounter resistance. So there are battles worth fighting and winning. But if the woke and all their complex varieties can bring their best ideas and intentions to the collective table and submit them to scrutiny and questioning like everybody else, they should have a seat at that table. When the North won the Civil War, the South was not banished from the Union. It was included. It just wasn't allowed to carry on owning slaves. So in closing, I want to offer this. When it comes to understanding and challenging woke, whether in the field of psychotherapy or elsewhere, I invite you to embrace your confusion, but not wallow in it. Seek the truth by gaining knowledge that dispels ignorance and brings clarity. 
Let that knowledge inform your view, speech, and actions, and may further knowledge provoke new levels of confusion that increase your wisdom. In other words, to get back to the original chant, we could say it like this. May you seek, dwell in, and tell the truth. May you progress along the path of truth and develop an ever deeper and broader understanding. May your confusions be clarified. And may you experience your confusion dawning as wisdom. That's it for now. If you like this video, give it a like. Subscribe to my channel. Click the bell for notifications. Please leave me a comment and share the video with a friend. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other. And I hope you'll join me in the next video. Bye for now.